from here. Uh, hey, what's up you guys? So this video, I'm gonna try to cover the most that I can in regards to the towers, like the Towers of Time and the Classic Towers. Um, and also I'll be explaining to Crypt, but that'll just be for a second video that I'll post afterwards, because that's like its own thing. So if you played Injustice 2, these towers, they work very much like the multiverse, like it's nearly identical, it's like very, very similar. So with the Classic, it's like the Classic Multiverse, where you can just do like novice type of stuff. Like um like a basic ladder, so you can see your character's ending. Then it has like an intermediate one, and then the the expert one, right, or the champion one, or whatever. Then you have the endless tower, and then you have survivor, right. So those all work relatively the same. Like you know them in previous games, it's very very straightforward. You complete it, you get rewards, um, and you can choose a difficulty. Like when you start, like you can choose whatever character, choose a difficulty, and then you unlock like their ending. I don't think that you unlock a skin for the character, unlike in previous games, you can unlock like a skin or like a shader, I don't think that that actually happens with these, I could be wrong, um, just because I did the novice one and I didn't gain anything, at least I don't think that I did. Um, so there's that, right, that's just the classic stuff. Now the Towers of Time, and this is the one that behaves a lot like the multiverse itself, um, and... Well, you can apply this to anything. I'm going to talk about the consumables, but basically, these, they're all on a timer, right? Just like the multiverse. Like, you have a certain amount of time to complete them, and you have specific um, prizes that you can win from completing the towers. So each one, you can think of it like a platform. Like, each of these are just different platforms or different islands, and then they have their own set towers, right? So, like with this one, for example, if you look at the left side where it says Objective Rewards, basically for completing this entire platform, you will unlock all of the things that are there. So this is how you unlock cer certain like cosmetics, like certain skins, certain masks, certain weapons and all that stuff for specific characters. Um, so this is kind of like the go-to way to do that, right? Like you just kind of have to like test your luck and actually see which ones are offering anything. And that's more or less just how that goes. This one, however, this one is entirely different. So with this specific platform or this island, this is like purchasing your own legendary multiverse. You can you can unlock specific stuff for specific characters, but you have to buy it first. So for example, this one is already bought. So this is the one that I'm working on with Scarlet. So when you look on top, like the title of it, it says the Death of Kotokan, that's kind of irrelevant, that's whatever. The thing is, you see how it says stage two? This is basically the second stage or the second platform that I've gotten, right? So you initially start with stage one. So just to show you, you see how it gives me the option by pressing square or hitting one, it gives me a replace tower platform. I can choose basically any other character. So you can see how it says cost to unlock is 25,000. It means that you need that, that much amount of coins, like that many coins to actually unlock the, the platform itself. So just to show you how it actually looks, I did it with Scorpion by accident. I'll actually explain what happened afterwards, if, it, if even I'll probably explain it in the description. But Scorpions, I accidentally bought, right? So when you do buy it, it now gives you the option to summon. So like, let's say you have to hold it to. So let's say do that, right? As you can see, it resets the whole thing. So now it's specifically um, a Scorpion tower. So by, complete, by doing this, I have to use Scorpion for this platform. I have to use it. And you see how it says stage one now, as, as opposed to stage two. So it's very much like the Legendary Multiverse where you just have to complete each tower, but they also come with requirements. So with this one, you see the requirements, it says Shao Kahn must die, it means you have to complete this tower. And then when you finish that, you actually have to sacrifice 50 soul fragments as well. And then when you go to the next one, you have to do 50 total uppercuts. And then this one is 50 total throws. Like in, in, in all total, like in completion, like that's what you have to do. So I'm not sure exactly how it works with ranked, I don't know if it's the same thing like Injustice, like you can only do these requirements like in a ranked mode. Um, and or multiverse stuff or like the towers. Like I don't know if you can do private matches or single fights to do the same thing, but all I know for now is that you can literally do those requirements, you can achieve them in any single tower. You can do any of these towers um, or you can do the classic towers, it doesn't matter, you can do it either way. And it counts towards those requirements. So that's like scorpions, right? So like, let's say I want to replace it. Basically, any one that you buy, it's kind of like stocked in an inventory. So like with Scarlet, you see how it says summon, 
I could just bring bring hers back, and it saves all the progress that you did before. So like with this one, I completed the first one, I completed the second one, and I completed the last one. So now I'm just working on this. So you see with this, I met the requirements except for the total fatalities. So I need to complete that, that total fatality requirement before I can actually do this tower. And then when I finish that, the last requirement is I need 75 brutalities done with Scarlet in order to complete this. And then once I do all of that, then I unlock all the objective rewards on the left side. So you can see it's like I get a skin, um, I get a brutality, I get a taunt, um, I get an augment, and all that kind of stuff. So now to explain the augments and consumables. So like let's say I wanted to do this, right? Like for example, like let's say I just chose to do this. You have the option, you can, you can pick whoever you want. But before you start the fight, don't mash X. You see how it says use a consumable and it's glowing? When you press 1, you can actually use any one of these. So they all have their mini description. So the way that you can understand this is, you see how this one it says uh, Nitaro's gemstone? It says, it says times 1. This is how many you have. So times 3, times 8. I mean, it means that I have 8 of these or 3 of these or 1 of these, whatever. So for this one, for example, Natara's gemstone uh, is... Okay, let me choose an attack. That one's... I think that might be better. Crystal of Life. It says instantly grants 50% health when activated during the match. So you know how in previous towers or previous multiverse events, you can get assists and you press um, the analog stick or whatever and it's on a cooldown and you can keep on using it? This is essentially customizing your own augments. This is customizing your assists. So you see on the top where it says inventory, and then it has whole tower and single fight. So for whole tower, it means that with these specific augments, you can use this for every single fight throughout the entire tower. Right? You only have to use it once. Right? And they all have their own different perks and stuff like that. You just have to read it. With single fight, you can equip up to three different assists to, to, um, to actually call upon within the fight. But the thing is, some assists, they take up more spots than others. So see like this one, it says Crystal of Life instantly grants 50% health when activated during the fight, but it says two slot, it means that it takes up two slots out of the three. So you can only use a one slot one more to fill it up. It's like with this one, it's Takeda, Takeda's Kunai, right, it takes up one slot. Once you get all of that, you would hold square, right, hold it to confirm it all the way, and then that stays locked, and that's what you start the fight with. But it's only this one fight, like with the character. So you press triangle just to clear them out, like let's say you don't want to do it, so you do that. So you can customize several things, like a whole bunch of one different ones, so you have three total assists, and then those things would help you out in the fight. The difference is though, is the less slots that they take, the longer the cooldown. So all the ones that only have one slot, it takes a lot longer for it to come back, like the cooldown of it is pretty extensive. If it takes up two slots, it's not as long. Um, but it still does take a little bit of time. However, when it's three slots, it comes back extremely fast. Like this one, for example, this is Katana's Warfan. You basically get to summon Katana, and you get four different assists from Katana. And it doesn't matter what, what which one you do, the cooldown is literally like on a two or three second cooldown. Like you use it, it takes you like three seconds, and she comes back. And you just keep on using it and using it, but that's the only assist that you get. So it actually is kind of fun to, to like mix and match and to know what it is that you want to use or to play around with it. Um, like it honestly is kind of fun because it does sort of feel like it's evening out the, the playing field But some fights are still very very annoying and you kind of do have to play around with it a bit And try to figure out what it is that you need to use um, So like with this the consumables you normally earn these by completing towers completing fights um, or you get consumables within the crypt itself um, But that's pretty much just how this works as a whole and you see it says recommend a consumable. Oh wait, I didn't want to start this. I'll just back out. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, that's more or less just how those work. So let me go back to this. And you can use this literally anywhere. Some fights, though, they actually do not let you have any consumables, like only for certain boss fights. Um, but, you know, like that's just like few and far. So, 
before you start to fight, instead of always mashing X, because I, I have a habit of like mashing X, as soon as I start the ladder, I just keep on mashing, 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 just to get the match started. It usually helps to just wait, see what the augments are that the opponent has, and then just try to counter those augments. And then go from there. Like it makes it, it does make it significantly easier. Some of them it's still really, really annoying and difficult, but it does level it out for the most part. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, I guess one of the other things to explain is uh, normally the rewards that you get, if you look at the bottom left, you see the coins, the souls, and the hearts. Coins you basically earn from completing just about anything. Like um, like doing combos, you get coins. Um, winning matches, you get coins. Or even losing matches, I believe, you get coins. By completing towers, you get coins. Um, completing a whole platform, you get coins. Um, and then for the soul one, it's sort of the same, but there's like fewer of them. And same with the hearts. The hearts, it's usually only like a bonus reward for maxing out like the high score or something. Like that's the only time you really get the hearts. Any other time to get the heart is you would have to perform brutalities or fatalities during basically anything that you do. Like it doesn't really matter what mode it is, you just have to perform a fatality or brutality and that's what counts. Like that's what adds on more hearts. So it is very very time consuming, it is very tedious. But to my knowledge that's the only way to get it. Like either that or rewards that you get, but the rewards are not that common for you to get the hearts and even if you do get it it's only like it's literally only like five hearts that it gives you so it's not like it's that much anyways um but that's more or less it like i can't really think of anything else um i guess just to show you well i don't want to waste it because i want to go into the crypt so i can show you guys um but yeah it increases the cost of this basically everyone's stage one it costs twenty five thousand. When you get to Scarlet's, when I completed the stage one, stage two, it costs 50,000 coins. I'm assuming if there is a stage three, it's gonna either be 75,000 or 100,000, but I don't know because I haven't reached there yet. Um, but you know, like I'll fill you guys in and everything as soon as I know that, like as soon as I complete it. Um, but that's all that there is to it. So in terms of like unlocking the cosmetics and all that stuff, you would have to do like the towers. The towers and the crypt, that's really like the only way that I found. Uh, but more so the towers. The towers actually give you like a lot of the nice stuff. Um, I'll show you really quick like the, the things that I was able to get. Like with Scarlet for example, like this skin. This skin itself, this is a reward for completing stage 1. So that's what you, that's what you would get. And then I think some of the masks came with it too. I don't really remember, but, you know, like, that's, like, the perk of it. And then the other stuff I just unlocked, I think, throughout the crypt. Like this, I think I got in the crypt. That I got in the crypt. Same with this one. And this one as well, I think. I'm not entirely certain, but, yeah. And then it was like the same thing with other characters, like Katana too. Like the skins that I got for her. Like this I got in the crypt. So that was, that was pretty cool, I like this one a lot. And then this one I got from completing a tower. Like this is just one of the common rewards that you get for completing one of the towers of time. Um, it's not the classic one, it was just one of the ones that offered a skin of hers as a reward. Same with this one too. And this one as well, I think. Or this one I think I got from the crypt. I'm not sure. But yeah. As you can see, like, if you look at the skins that you want, they do specify as to where you would get it. So you see, like, with this one, it says found in the Towers of Time. It doesn't specify exactly where you would get it in the towers, but that's where you would get this one. This one is found in the crypt, so it's just in one of the loot boxes that you find from there. And that's more or less just how it works. So yeah, so yeah, that's pretty much it for that. For the intros and stuff, yeah, see this one also found in a Towers of Time or found in a Crypt. Basically, that's really the only way that I found, like that's legit, like the only way that you unlock stuff. And then I think um, just by playing in general, just by winning matches, if you see where it says Augment Sockets, Augment Sockets for the mask, you see that little yellow bar? where it says gain 15,000 HP or something like that. 
basically the more that you use specific uh, gear like the like the mask the fan or the sigh or whatever the gear is for any character the more you use it and the more matches that you win the faster it levels up and when it levels up i think it unlocks the stuff underneath it at least to my understanding that that's how it works like at least for the first couple of them like these probably not because you see it has different requirements but all of these I don't think I won a single one like in the crypt or in the tower. I kind of just kept on using the same mask and it just like leveled up over time. Uh, but yeah, I think that that's all that, that... I think that's literally it. I don't really know any other details. Um, just because realistically I don't really care for this kind of stuff. I just want really nice skins. <laughs> so that's why I really like delved into this. Like I just want good cosmetics for my characters. Um, and you don't have to use a tournament variation when you go into these, like into the towers, so you can just customize any ability that you want. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. Race Against Time, this is, if you place with like the top 5%, top 10%, top 25, you get those specific rewards. If you place. So I guess you just have to wait until it's over, yeah. You see Race Against Time, right underneath it, it's in red, it's very very hard to read, but it's on a countdown. So once that countdown is up, depending on where you go, I think you get all... I, be, I think you get every single reward at like as high up as the tier goes. So if you get like top 5%, I believe you get Scorpion Skin, you get the currency of the 200 time crystals, the consumables, um, and the currency. I believe you get all of the above. I believe that that's how it works. So, I guess time will tell whenever that thing is up. So, yep. Uh, so yeah, that's that. And then I'm gonna jump into the crypt in a few minutes. So, but that that's basically it for this. I don't know what this does exactly. Like, I'm really not sure at all. Um, so, I have no comment on that. So yeah, I hope that this was useful. Um, feel free to leave any comments um, or even extra info that I didn't cover just because I'm trying to figure this stuff out too. Uh, and yeah, I hope you guys have a good day or night. And